Welcome back everyone, my name is Mario and in this video we're going to talk about the importance of support loops. So I have a couple of examples here prepared. Uh, so to kind of start at the very beginning, uh, first we need to define what a structural edge is so that we know why support loops are important to hold those structural edges in place. So to define a structural edge, a structural edge is going to be the one without which the shape would not be possible. So once we would remove this edge, that means that the cube is no longer there. Now we have sort of like triangular shape, and this simply means that this edge right here is important to maintaining the structure. Now, a support loop is going to be every single edge that it's neighboring that uh, structural edge and holding the main structure in place. So without those support loops, this cube becomes a sphere and simply becomes a sphere because all of the polygons right here are the same size. If those polygons would be slightly differently shaped, that means that that, uh, let's say, spherical shape also changes simply because now we kind of like change the difference between those polygons. Now to add the support loop to maintain these structural edges in place, we could simply select all of the edges of our object in case we would like to tighten the whole cube a bit more, bevel it out, and depending on the distance between uh, the edges, the support loop is going to also kind of like change the form. So the further away the edges from uh, one another are, the softer the edge, the closer support loops come to the structural edge. That also means that the uh, original form is going to be that much tighter or that much uh, sharper. So again, just summarize, the larger the distance between the support loops and structural edge is, the softer the result, the closer support loops to structural edge, sharper the result. So okay, so this is kind of like the basics of it all. Where we can see that in practice is from the math that we did from the last time, is we have here also kind of like established the main structural edges, which are holding our form in place. Without structural edges, these forms could not uh, exists and this form could not actually be in place. Now we can start adding support loops also by using the multi-cut. So again, to access the multi-cut, you're going to need to be in the edge mode and holding shift, right click, and then you're going to find here, um, it's going to be here, multi-cut, or you're going to use insert edge loop tool. So by default, we're going to need to have at least two support loops per structural edge. So either being this one, or let's say we decide to add it right here. So now if we decide to smooth preview this, this is also going to be under attribute editor. And if we come here to preview the vision levels, uh, number three on your keyboard is gonna be the hotkey. So if I decide to go here to subdivision levels and under smooth mesh, subdivision levels, and if I increase these subdivisions, you're gonna see that the mesh becomes more smoother. And the reason why it's more smoother is because you're gonna see also that actually we are adding sort of like this invisible uh, subdivisions to our mesh. So right now we're gonna leave it at three. I'm gonna disable uh, display subdivision. And this is going to be our new, let's say form with clearly defined uh, support loops on our structural edge. So we can continue, we can add, let's say, even if we want to support loop here to define this edge even further, or we can also come here and define this edge. And in this case, we're going to have one mid loop, which is going to behave as a support loop for both of these edges right here. So technically, we do have uh, two support loops for this structural edge on each side. So this is how that works. One uh, maybe important thing also to mention is that what you've seen in the last video is that we did something similar along these lines. So we changed the support loop, we pushed it a little bit down, we pushed this one a little bit down and we pushed it also on the inside. And we also pushed this one a little bit on the inside. So what now changed here is that we made the support loop into a new structural edge. So that means that this edge becomes now a form of a structure. Without it, the structure does not exist. So the moment when we do that, that simply means that even though that this was originally created as a support loop, we changed its function to a structural edge. So now this structural edge now also needs two support loops, including the one from the top. And once we subdivide preview, now we're gonna see that we actually have a new form created out of that. So this is how we're gonna use and manipulate uh, support loops to maintain uh, structural edges 
and to hold them in place and progress through the form uh, further and further well, until we find, let's say, the design language that we want to establish. Uh, all right, so a few final words on what to avoid when creating support loops, and that is going to be, let's say, creating a support on a single edge like this. Uh, typically, that's not going to be uh, ideal because it's going to give you a broken edge loop. So ideally, what we're looking for is the edge loop that actually follows the surface like you can see in this case. So this is going to be a good result. This is going to be a bad result. So you can definitely limit support loop, let's say, only to a specific area. But just please bear in mind that area needs to be closed and then you can add support loop and then you can uh, establish that form a little bit better. Another thing what we'll not be doing is adding, let's say, detail directly on a structural edge. So in this case, the structural edge is going to be this one right on the top. Instead, when creating details, what we're going to need to do is establish that support loop first. So this being the support loop, this right here and this right here. So these are the support loops. And then when we're creating details, details will always continue from the support loop downwards they will never start on the structural edge without that support loop even if we would create let's say support loop here you're going to see that actually that support loop is broken and it's creating this little area well if we subdivide preview this with the extremely shiny material we're going to see the difference where uh, where the highlight is actually very well maintained on this area but it's sort of like a broken on this one right here uh, so when creating details, they will always be connected to the support loop down that they actually connect to the support loop in this way. And they will not be connected to the structural edge where the detail shares this connection on a structural edge in a single point like this. So this is just important thing to remember to avoid. Uh, so yeah, this video covers the importance of support loops. And the next video, we're going to talk about the importance of edge flow. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you next time.